Hey everybody, this is Sheets, and I'm going to be going through my betting breakdown for this uh, UFC card. And for those of you that are watching this for the first time, again, this is a very contrarian approach to uh, to wagering. It's the same approach that I use, honestly, uh, with all sports betting that I engage in, which isn't all that often. But it's also the same kind of logic that I put into uh, all types of analysis, including the stock market, which has been responsible for the majority of my successes. Um, just basically the idea is that this is not DFS. You know, daily fantasy sports, again, requires that you, at least to some degree, accept that the lines put out by Vegas are somewhat accurate. Um, and, and what you do is you use those implied odds and those win percentages and those props and chances that guys finish or chances that guys get takedowns and things like that. And you then you project fantasy points and then uh, – after that, you try to become an expert at putting lineups together and getting leverage against players that uh, fighters that other people are going to own quite a bit and things like that. So it's not as though you can't get an edge in DFS, uh, in daily fantasy sports. But the, the idea is that you have to presume, at least from the beginning, that there's no edge in the actual line. OK, now, again, that's not exactly true. There are people that put their own opinions over the actual line. And, and if that's the case, then, again, you're you're trying to. Uh, not be you're trying to not be GTO like you're trying to 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 exploit the market in addition to being able to project fantasy points. Um, that's that's something different. Nonetheless, the entire concept of daily fantasy sports is in some degree uh, fashioned by the presumption that all the the Vegas lines are somewhat accurate. Uh, now, when you're betting on actual MMA, or you're betting on sports, you're betting on whatever, you are naturally presuming the opposite, right? I mean, if you're 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 trying to fight a VIG here, you know, where you have to pay 20 cents on each side, or in some cases more, uh, you, you are presuming thus that that your knowledge of what these lines should be is better than the sum of the uh entire wagering public, which is again, that's that's kind of an intimidating assumption uh to make. But nonetheless, that's that that is implicit in, in claiming that you have an edge in in betting sports or betting MMA or betting stocks or betting anything is that you know more than everybody else, sort of, you know. So um, not to say that that and again, that can be somewhat depressing. Right? Um, but yeah, listen, just because you 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 it's that's difficult to do. Number one, I'm not saying you can't have an edge. And number two, even if you don't have an actual edge, I mean, that doesn't mean you necessarily shouldn't bet. I mean, because, look, I mean, I'm not that guy that's going to say, listen, if you don't have a 0.2% EV, just don't bet. Because, listen, part of the fun in, in watching these things is to have money. You want to know the truth. So, um, uh, nonetheless, what we like to do is try to at least give you uh, at least an approach that makes sense. Uh, it, unless you're going to be really, really good at out analyzing the entire public. Um, you're better off doing what I do, and that is trying to be contrary, meaning trying to figure out wh where the public money is going. And, and if the public money is going there in a way that doesn't make sense, in other words, if the public money is going to a certain prop because just a narrative is just so easy to tell, then probably that's not the side you want to be. There's probably some implicit bad line value in a situation like that. You, you really want to look for for wagers that are driven you know more by psychology right and try to fade those and, and even if you don't exactly know the data backwards and forwards you can become a real expert at figuring out what you know which is the side that people are just love to play okay and if you could just consistently kind of fade that uh you're 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 getting good EV uh, in the long run it's not going to be fun and you're probably going to be, you know, betting against most of your friends. But in general, uh, that is an extremely strong way to play. And it's the way I decided to attack MMA when I got into betting. It started like six months ago. And so far, so good. I mean, things are going really, really well. I'm getting a nice handle on, you know, what the industry is looking at, what the betting public looks at, what the sharps are looking at, and figuring out the best way to fade that and figure out the best way to analyze them. And we have some real good ones, man. Like last week when the entire civilized world was going to be on that Jordan Wright under, I mean, we just, we just, we just figured, you know, if everybody's on that, you know, we'll just pick the over. <laughs> That's pretty much. And that went to decision and we got like four to one on that. 
Then we got Alexander Hernandez plus four to one inside the, uh, to, to go to decision, which nobody thought was going to happen. We had somebody in a round two. So we get some cool bets here. And it makes for a fun sweat if you're going to watch the card. So let's take a look. Uh, first fight. Uh, oh, first of all, the rules. Right. So just so you know, I am going to be wagering on every single bet that I make. Okay. Uh, and it's always going to be one unit. And one unit for me is $180. And you're going to see me put those in. And if I can't, it's only because I'm being shut out because of Zoom. Because drafting doesn't like when you're running Zoom. So we'll just see what happens. But uh, that's what I promise you. We're going to bet every every fight. It's going to be 180 per fight, and that's it. I know it's not the greatest money management system in the world, but that's just what I do. Um, okay. First of all, Eric Gonzalez versus Trevor P. That's the first one on my board, and this one, to me, is like extremely easy uh, because, listen, Trevor Peak is coming off of two fights in the Contender Series that are available for everybody to watch on YouTube, and each one of them, he's just a freaking madman. He just comes right out. Swings, gets hit, swings, gets hit, looks like he's getting finished. And then then and then he comes back and he finishes the guy. And then you're seeing all week long the 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 narrative, right? That he is the dog. He's a junkyard dog. He's just got that special thing that you just can't, you know, he just won't say die or something like that. And they're convinced that there's gonna this is gonna be a car crash, this is gonna be a train wreck, and that Trevor Peak is gonna come after it and he's gonna just just take him to the woodshed. Okay. So what that means to me is that all wagers that involve Trevor Peak inside the distance are terrible value, okay? That just too much of that this line is being driven by that easy narrative. So what we're going to do is one of two things. We're, you're either going to play Eric Gonzalez to win um, or preferably something like the over, okay, which is – Again, this is something that almost nobody's going to be trying. So I think that there's probably inherent good value in there. You could play the over 1.5 at, at a dollar fifty favorite. You've only got to last through halfway through the second round. Okay. So I'm I'm in. You know, so we're we're gonna try over 1.5 plus 150 for 180. Let's put that in. And so we're gonna have this issue. Okay, so we'll look around. So, so we will. Uh, we we. I promise you, we will put these in at at the end of the day. Okay. Um, let's just see something. Will it let me log in? No, probably not. All right, so now uh, let's go on to the next one. Uh, we will go Haley Cowan versus Aline Perez. Um. All right, so this this one's one of the tough ones because you're not really getting too much interest in this fight, so you're not getting a big psychological push either way. Um, if anything, I think the majority of the action is going to be, like, the action side would be Alien Perez. In other words, they'll think that if Alien Perez is more likely to finish, I guess, than Haley Cowan. So if we are going to bet this fight, it's... It's, we're not going to take the Cowan by decision side, and we're not going to take the Aline Perez by uh, by submission or, or KO side. Um, so it's got to have to be something else. Let I think what we're just going to do is we're just going to we're just going to play this fight. You know, let's let's go contrarian then. I mean, let's see what the inside the distance props are. Fight lines. Uh, let's see winning method. What can we get by Haley Cowan to win by decision or submission? I don't know which one it's going to be, so um, we're going to have to pick one of them. This is going to be really, really difficult to do. Um, so Perez by decision is plus 215, but I think what we could do better with the Haley Cowan by K or submission. And there it is. Ooh, plus 300. So what do we prefer? Cowan by KO. That means KO inside the distance, Cowan. Or Perez by decision. I think Perez by decision is probably wiser. So let's just go ahead and do that one. So Perez by decision for 180. Okay. okay, moving on. Next fight. Rafael Alves versus Julio Aliyev. So this one is, uh, this has been analyzed to the death. And this has also been analyzed almost to the, to the exact method of victory. Okay, so this is this is what's really funny. Like people 
are just so convinced that they can know exactly what's going to happen in a fight. So I'm going to share to you what that is because everybody seems to agree. So Aliyev is going to come and just shoot for takedown, shoot for takedown, shoot for takedown. And Alves is going to go for the guillotine. So Alves, his path to victory is going to be grasping that guillotine and getting the submission. And Alia's path to victory is going to be getting the takedowns and either grinding out a, a long decision or maybe getting a late submission. So those are the props that we're not going to play. Okay. Now, first of all, there's no real lean either to either side of this. It's not as if everybody's all over Alia or all over Alves. So the, the, the side we, that is overvalued, I believe, is going to be Alves by decision, by, excuse me, Alves by submission or Alves in the first round. And I think the stuff that's going to be overvalued also is Alia by decision or Alia maybe second or third round or Alia by submission. So what we're going to do is we're going to, we're going to take a shot here. Okay. We're, we're going to, we're going to try Alia in round one. And this is very, very difficult to get, but we're going to try it. Alia in round one is plus three thirty, And it's actually, it looks like a really, really bad line, which probably makes it worth playing. Okay. So Aliyev round one. So we're not going to play money line. But Aliyev round one plus three thirty. Okay. Uh, moving on, we have Odie Osborne versus Charles Johnson. Okay. So this is another one analyzed to the death. To the death, and this is what w the consensus is. Charles Johnson, he might be a little bit of a slow starter. Okay, that's the thing. But he's eventually, he's got good cardio, and he's eventually going to wear down Odie Osborne. And maybe Charles Johnson, say, like round two or round three to get the finish, or maybe Charles Johnson to get the decision. So those are going to be the overvalued spots. I haven't really seen much of a case made for the Osborne side in general. It's all about, like, how is Johnson going to win? So I think... An, He's being treated really like he's a minus 500, and yet he's only minus 165. So my logic is there's got to be a reason. So we're just going to take Odie Osborne plus the 140 for 180. Okay, moving on. Joe Selecki versus Carl uh, Deaton the third. Um so it's going to be again the narrative out there. Nobody really knows much about Deaton which is a little bit concerning, okay? <laughs> it's a little bit concerning here uh, because no one's put any work into this. I, I just wonder if, if Deaton can win this somehow. Uh, I, I really thought about just taking a shot here, but you know what? The line is what it is. You know, I, I, don't, I, don't, I can't pretend that I think that Deaton is just somehow better than this line. So I'm not going to do that. Although I have never heard nobody pick. I mean, literally nobody. Um, but what you are hearing is that Selecki is definitely the grappler and he's going to control him. And he's, you know, maybe it's not going to be the most exciting fight in the world, but he's definitely going to get the better of him. So what we're going to do is what we usually do in a situation like this is, is pick the favorite and go with our old faithful. And that's the Selecki in round two. And that's what we've been trying because what happens is if you look at this winning method or round props or whatever it is, so you see, well, Selecki round one is plus 200. Selecki round two is plus 400. I don't know. You know, you don't get, you usually get a much better, uh, you get a little more juice out of that jump from round one to round two. Um, here you're really not getting it, which is kind of interesting. Um, but I just feel as though for, see, here's the thing. It feels uncomfortable to play Selecki in round one because you feel as though he's going to get the takedowns. He's going to grind them, but that probably survives round one and Selecki takes him in round two. So because it's that much more uncomfortable to play it, I am going to take Selecki in round one for the 180. All right, uh, moving on, we have Jordan Levitt versus Victor Martinez. Okay, so we have a classic striker versus grappler matchup. And you're getting a little bit of love on both sides. I have to say you're getting a little bit of love in Victor Martinez, a uh, little bit in form of Levitt. We, we do know that Levitt, uh, if he's going to get the win, it's going to be by submission. That seems like pretty clear. 
And if Martinez gets the win, it's not sure. It could be cut by KO. It could be by decision, but he's definitely the striking edge. I am going to try something that's going to be off the board here. We're going to try Levitt by decision. Let's see what the price on that is, because that's we're not getting too much of that. That's got to be the, the overvalued or the undervalued line here. So let's see. We have... We could just play over 2.5 for plus 130. That's 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 one thing we could do. But let's let's that's no fun. Let's see. Jordan Levitt by decision is plus 400. Yeah, I think I that's the thing. Like if you play, that's the thing. I think that if it does go into the third round, I don't think he's gonna finish. You know what I mean? Like I think it's gonna be a control thing. This is such an impossible impossible thing to bet Jordan Levitt by decision. And because it is, we're going to be trying. Jordan Levitt by decision for 180. Okay. Oh, we're really going 0 12 this time. This is this is this. This is an 0 12 special. All right. Jasmine Jadavicious versus Gabrielle Hernandez. So we have uh ja Jasmine uh Jasmine who is a wrestler and she is big, um, and, and the narrative is that, you know, she can control people, but only those, really, those those short people. Like, she she apparently got the better of a couple of, like, really, really short short women and, and small women. And, and Gabrielle Fernandez is just way too tough to be controlled by her. Um, and yet, she's only plus 105. Okay, so we, we are going to go play uh, J Jada Vicious here. The only question is whether we want to play her by decision or just plus the 105. Um, we are just going to play her plus the 105 here. So Jazz the Vicious plus the 105 for 180. Um, okay, Mike Malat versus Johan Leness. So... This is what we got. We have two Canadians that are that are fighting against one another. And you have Malat, who has been, you know, he doesn't fight too often, and then he gets injured, and then he comes back. And what what I'm hearing is that Linez, he basically he's got a he's got a good right hand or whatever. But aside from that, um, aside from that, he doesn't really have too much to offer in like rounds two and three. Um so basically the, 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 the idea is that unless Lenez gets him out in round one, then Malat is probably going to take over and win in round two and round three. So I think the Malat in round two and round three, as well as actually Lenez in round one is probably overvalued. Um, so what we're going to try to do is either play, uh, what's his name? Lenez by decision, which we can't, I, I'm, I'm not doing that. It's either going to be Malat, Malat round one or Malat by decision. Malat by decision. That that one could be juicy. Let's see. What do you think's more? Malat round one or Malat by decision? Let's find out. Fight props. Uh, Malat round one plus 165. Malat by decision plus 450. Let's go. The other thing, by the way, is that Malat has never been past 30 seconds or so of a second round. Sounds good to me. Plus 450. Let's go. Um, okay, moving on. We have Tatiana Suarez versus Montana De La Rosa. So this one is, is again, this is a nice, easy one to, that people have analyzed. You have Suarez who's coming back. She's, you know, it was like 9-0, and oh, been off for three years, one of the best wrestlers in, 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 the, in the space. And De La Rosa has a little bit of wrestling, but, you know, she doesn't have the striking, really, to combat Suarez. So it's basically however Suarez chooses to win this is, is basically the narrative. And the idea is that is that Suarez, you know, will get the takedowns, grind her out, and either go to decision or maybe a round two or round three finish. Um, I am going to just go with the easy way. So I'm going to... I'm going to pick her to actually win in round one. Okay. It's either going to be round one or round three. See, the thing is, is that 
This is this is the deal with the round with the round three pro. Is is the idea is that okay, if she really runs her over, she can get out of her round one. And it, and if and if Della Rosa survives, she'll probably not get her in round two. But the, the idea is that if she can survive both the rounds, then probably Suarez will be probably cruised to a victory. I mean, the more I'm looking at this, I think I want to go with the Suarez round three, just because it's 10 to 1. When Suarez round one, I mean, it's certainly reasonable. Because round one, Suarez fades the narrative that they're, they're being ring rust. That's what I've heard about a little of that. That maybe she doesn't come right out and look for the statement win right away. She wants to get her feet wet a little bit and kind of like play around. Um, I, boy, I don't know which one to do here. Either Suarez round one or Suarez in round three. Um, you tell me, Eni, Meany. Okay, okay, round one. Let's go. Plus one. That's fine. All right. Um, okay, moving on. We have uh, just a couple more, right? No, yeah, three more, I think. Augusto Sakai against Dantel Mays. All right, now this one is kind of a, a heavyweight kind of crap show, crap show right? Um, you have Sakai coming off of four straight KO losses, uh, or four straight losses. Dantel Mays is coming off of, 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 a, of a fight where everybody bet on him, and he, and he let them down. And I don't know exactly where people are coming in on this one, okay? The one thing I am sure of is that Sakai, what they're saying, throws nothing but pillow pillow punches. He has no power. And Dante Mays really doesn't have a lot of finishes. So what we're going to do is we are going to uh, play the uh, the fight uh, does not go to decision. So let's take a look. We'll go um, winning method. Actually, fight lines. Fight does not go to decision. Where is that? Money line. Be popular. Fight goes the distance. No, I want fight does not go the distance. Um, where was that? Fight lines. We just bet the over to decision only. No, we don't want that. Where is it? Oh, fight goes the distance plus one forty. No, I want does not go to the distance. All right, let's just let's just go the under, the under one point five, plus the one forty five. Sloppy heavyweight fight. No one's going to finish them. Sounds good to me. Let's have them finish. Okay, just a couple of more here. We have Andre Muniz against Brandon Allen. So Brandon Allen is the big, the big dog du jour here. I mean, everybody's loving this. Okay. Brandon Allen got a win over Jacob Malkoon, who's going on to beat everybody. And and Muniz has quite questionable cardio. And Brandon Allen is that guy who fights every. He's like seems to be on every card. He just had a first round sub, and how is Muniz gonna? Is but Muniz is somehow like a full two to one. I mean, I think he's got to have something. So I'm not taking the Brandon Allen side of this. Right? It's gonna it's gonna be something on the Muniz side. So it's either gonna be Muniz in Muniz inside the distance. People are playing him by submission, so we can't play that. But we can play him by a certain rounds. Um, let's see the difference between rounds one and rounds two, round props. You need round one plus 175, you need round two plus 400. Uh, you need by decision plus 400. Uh, that could be fun. And the, what that looks like is that you need gets the takedowns and just doesn't get the sub somehow. Well, that's rough. That is really, really tough. But we're going to do it. How is this ever coming in? Well, we're going to find out. You need my decision. Ah, plus 180. That's literally the worst bet I've ever made. So, but, so bad, like they say, it just might work. Nobody's playing. And it's only 180. I mean, it's only plus 400. Okay, and the final fight, this one's so easy. Krelaw versus Ryan Spann. You know, Span is either going to get there in round one, maybe round two, or he has no shot, right? And if Span wins, it's going to be by submission. So anything with Ryan Span in round one, round two, inside the distance, or submission 
is bad value. Nikita Krylov, okay? Again, he, you know, he, again, he he's, uh, he might be a little more patient. So he's got a little bit more round two equity. So what we want to do is we want to play anything that does not involve this fight ending in round two. So it's either going to be like the plus two and a half, whatever that is, or it's going to be something like Krylov in like a late round. I mean, can we get away with that? Let's see. First of all, we can just take over 1.5 for plus 140. We can do that. Might go the distance. Seems a little seems a little bad at plus 500. I don't know how it's going to be five rounds, but take a look at round props here. Kreloff round, wow, Kreloff round two is plus 650. I just worry that there's bad value in that. Oh, it's just, it's tempting me though. Just don't see Span lasting the second round. Span round, well, how is Span round two the same price as Kreloff round two? Kreloff's like a plus one, a minus 150 favorite. And Span, like his most of his upside is round. I think this is this is the probably the worst price on the board. Span round two. Kreloff round two is just is just calling me. I just have to do it. So we have 12 wagers. We will go through them again. Uh Kreloff round two plus 180 plus 650. That's probably the sucker bet because that like looks like it's a lot. Uh Muniz by decision. Nobody's playing that. That's what. Uh, Sakai, Maze. I guess some people are playing that. That's not a total lock. It's not the worst play in the world, plus 145. Suarez, round one, plus 300. That's not the worst play in the world. A lot by decision. That's terrible. I don't know why anybody would play this along with me, but I'm doing it. Uh, Jazz the Vicious is plus 105. It's just kind of some reasonable play in that fight. Not a big deal. Levitt by decision. Nobody's playing this thing. So this is a lock. Selecki round one. That's fair enough. I just didn't want to go to the round two. I thought round two was a little bit overvalued. Odie Osborne plus only plus 140 against the legend Charles Johnson. All people are worried about is whether he finishes round one, two, or three. Well, Odie Osborne, I mean, he's only plus 140. He's got to have something. Sounds good to me. Aliyev, either getting the late round three sub or the decision. No, we're not doing that. We're going to play him in round one. Let's go. And Aline Perez by decision plus 215. Uh, that's not bad. And then we have the one that could never possibly win, and that would be, ooh, Eek Gonzalez over 1.5. The only thing I might change, what, what do you think peak is by decision? I want to take a look at that. Oh, yeah, yeah, let me see. If peak by decision is plus like 400 or so, I might replace it with that. Let's take a look. Okay, let's see. Round drops. Peak by decision is plus 900. I can't resist. Peak by decision, plus 900. Let's go right off the bat. So this is like a great card to go 0-12. Actually, that's not true. Maybe we'll get one win. Well, like the Jared, maybe Jared Vicious will win. But it's gonna be it's gonna be all kinds of sweat all night long. That'll do it. Uh, so we're gonna go. We're not gonna do a twelve pick parlay. We're just gonna go one eighty on all these snake all singles. And I trust me, when I log off, I will be putting all these in. Good luck, everybody.